Ladies and gentlemen, I am the official guide to the Loch Ness Monster, working under the auspices of the Inverness Town Council. It's really rather interesting the way I got the post, because of course I've always been very interested in monsters, and my Uncle Charles, so to speak, gave his life up to them. In fact, before he actually went into the home, the doctor told me that he'd never had a patient with such a varied assortment of monsters. And uh, so as soon as I heard of the Loch Ness Monster, I wrote to the Inverness Town Council and explained that I'd studied under my Uncle Charles, and I thought I might be of help in classifying their monster. And I also pointed out a very interesting thing. This controversy about the uh, Loch Ness Monster's wife. Well, now, in the, the poem of Keats, the first line of the poem, The Grecian Urn, it's definitely mentioned. He speaks of that still unravished bride of quiet Ness. And uh, it's uh, he goes on further and he says Sylvan historian who can best express and of course he's actually got the name of the paper wrong there it should be the best daily mail but that's no doubt poetic license and uh, the Inverness Town Council were very impressed with what I said and as luck would have it the gentleman who had the post of official guide before me was dismissed at that time it was all rather uh, sad of him because he was making the footprints of the monster on the shore one morning, opposite a hotel, and he was using a crushing instrument, and unfortunately he missed the shawl together and struck his foot, and his description of the monster was so vivid and comprehensive that the minister of the local Kirk overheard him from the hotel and reported him, and the Internet Town Council dismissed him the job as vacant, and I got it. It's rather interesting. Of course, it is the duty of an official guide to stimulate the interest of the visitors. And so, uh, two or three times a week, I'd go down to the shore in front of one of the hotels that wasn't doing so well, take a telescope with me, and look out to the centre of the loch and wait until the crowd had collected, and then say, ah, oh, so the monster has two heads, and go back into the hotel. And then, of course, from the visitors that came from the other hotels to that hotel, I drew commission, you see, and that was equally divided between the monster the Inverness Town Council and myself was rather happy sort of arrangement. I had one rather difficult situation. There was a lady in the hotel called Miss Grubbers. The rest of the guests called her the Loch Ness Spinster. She was very interested in the monster and kept on asking most ridiculous questions about it. And one day she said to me in the lounge of the hotel, are you interested in spirits? And I thought, what a funny thing to ask me. So I said, yes, I am. And so she said, well, if you come up to my room, I've got a bottle. And so, if you'll excuse me a minute, I'll tell you what happened when I got up to her room. Well, when I got up to her room, I sat down, and the first thing she asked me was, do you know anything about ancient Greek history? I thought that's rather a peculiar thing to ask me, and I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do, Miss Crowders. And so she said, well, if you remember, in ancient Greece, when a monster attacked a city, they took a maiden and tied her to a post outside the city, and the monster carried her off. So I could see which way the conversation was drifting, and so I said, well, Miss Crowders, yes, I guess it did in ancient Greece, but it's really rather dangerous. I mean, anything really might happen. She said, yes, that's just it. And so then she said, well, would you consider taking me down to the shores of the loch and tying me to a post and capturing the monster that way? And so I said, but if you're really bent on it, Miss Crowders, I, I will, because I'd heard she'd been captured by savages twice, and it's still very much the same. And so that evening at six o'clock, she turned up to the shores of the loch, and I tied her to a post, and after a little time, there was a swirl in the water, and the monster came to the surface, and he took one look at her and dived back into the loch, and he wasn't seen up that end for some time. It was after this that I actually got in communication with the monster. It was very interesting. I was walking along the shores of the loch late one evening, and I heard a noise coming from the centre of the loch. Sort of pa pa pi pa 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 pi pa Of course, I'd been in the scouts, and I was highly trained in Morse, and I immediately recognised the Morse code and uh, translated the message, and it was, Monster calling the British Isles, Monster calling the British Isles. So I wrapped out a message in reply, pa pa pi pa I said, I'm waiting here, what shall I do? And there was a swirl in the water, and the monster came to the surface, and he looked at me and started talking Morse very quickly, and I translated the message, and it was uh, that he was very pleased and happy in the loch, but unfortunately he took great exception to the Andromeda incident, and he said, I'm very annoyed about the whole thing, so I think it's very unfair to the town council, and my wife's taken up a very nasty attitude about it, and, and uh, I may tell you that if this happens again, I'm going straight off to Barton Creek. So I assured him that it wouldn't happen again, and he was more or less uh, peaceful after that, and he say, I said to him, well, now, how is it, Monster, you speak uh, more so fluently? And he explained to me that they used to live in the bottom of the Atlantic, and in the winter evenings, when there wasn't very much to do, he used to listen into the Atlantic cable, and uh, learned more that way, and he said, that's why I speak more with an American accent. 
I said, well, you still live in the, in the Atlantic? And he said, well, no, as a matter of fact, my wife's health's not what it should be. She's got some sort of bronchial trouble. And they moved into the Mediterranean. But she was so upset with the luxury cruises, because she said she could never come to the surface without blushing, that they heard Loch Ness was vacant and moved up there. And uh, he said he has three children. They are at a finishing school in the Gulf of Mexico, and they won't be coming up until next spring. And there's one thing he told me. He said he was very distressed to find so few people really believed in him. And he said, when you go to London, I wonder if you'd ask their, your audiences if they really believe in me, and I promised him I would. And so I'm going to ask you now, do you really believe in the Loch Ness Monster? And if you do, please lift your hands, your right hands above your head. Now, do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? One, two, three, four, five. Let's make it around half dozen. Six, a little higher, please. Six, yes. That's excellent. I'll go straight home and tell him.